welcome back to Alice Kessler's Project Car TV. Today we're working on the uh, 1970 Mustang for Dustin. We're going to get it pulled back out, get the cover off, and Robin's been making some efforts on here. Got quite a bit of sheet metal out of the way. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of follow the goal today is to get the rest of the sheet metal and frame rails, everything that that needs to come off the car, I'm hoping to complete that today. And then from there, we can put the new sheet metal on the car. So we've got a box over here with the first pieces that'll be going in, which is the pieces of the firewall that extend down to your floor where your feet and the pedals are at and everything. Definitely got to replace the one on the driver's side. Passenger side, I think we can just do one patched area and call that one complete. Um, once we get all the sheet metal out of the way, we will need to do a little cleanup inside the front frame rails, but I think we're going to be pretty good shape on this. So I'm going to get the car out, and really all i got to do is move it forward enough that we're not banging into other stuff trying to work on it. So. Okay, as you can see, um, I've already done most of the other side. Robin's been on this side and we got a little more to do this frame rail can come out all of the tail section back here can come off so my goal for today all of that is gone this, this door pillar stays um, but the rest of this is gone and then we've got to do some trimming up here in the front on the floors or the new parts in the box here so that's what I'm going to be working on That's about it. We've got pretty much everything cut off that needs to be cut off. Welds ground down. A little more cleanup to do up here and then put the wire wheel and clean off any of that surface rust we can get to and then put a and then we'll put a rust uh, reforming type primer on there. Additionally I've got part of the floor cut out. Uh, like I was saying like I was saying earlier the uh, part of the firewall that comes down where your feet and the pedals would be was pretty well rusted out so we've got a replacement one of those interesting uh, the way they formed it it's really doesn't fit very well for one they've put this flange on the side here see that and this should have, should not have a flange at all this fits flush to the floor with uh, surface material that's below it and then gets welded to it They've also put a little kick up over here, so just the uh, dies they've used are, are basically incorrect. So I'll be cutting the flange off up to where they bent it, but when they bent the flange in here, they also kind of kicked them in. So we've got to straighten all that out and then re realign everything so that we can cut it off in the right place. But I'll get the main part of that cut off. That'll let me start fitting it and then I know I need to take about three I know I need to take about three inches off up here to fit what I've already cut out. So, so you can see in this area in here all of this is is pretty well rusted. Um, only in one area right here does it appear to go all the way through. But with that in mind I'm thinking we're gonna order one of those panels as well. Um, we could make it but it's probably 16 or 14 gauge metal and so putting all those bins in there would be pretty time-consuming and I'm assuming since that one's rusted out the other side over here which has just one or two smaller rust holes but I'm assuming we're gonna need it as well so I think we're just gonna go ahead and order two of those in as you can see from back here 
pretty well have everything cut out and all of the uh, welds cut loose. We do have a little bit more of the quarter panel. We do have a little bit more of the quarter panel to remove here and actually all the way up that skin for the C pillar and that's on both sides. But for right now, I'm just gonna hold off on that just so everything kind of stays in place. And then we'll get those, once we have the floor and the trunk and everything put back in place over here with the inner fenders, then I'll cut those rails off and uh, clean up all those welds so that we'll be ready to put the quarter panels on. But it's darn close. And when we're done with all of that, we're gonna start in on the front end and do a whole lot of replacement up here as well. Been watching this whole Mustang coming apart in pieces and we have finally gotten to the point where we're ready to start putting some new metal back in. So we're working on the driver's side uh, front torque box and the metal that's still here is in real good shape and when you buy these torque boxes you can buy them as a kit where you get actually three pieces there's a little triangle shaped uh, brace that goes on the outside and uh, Dynacorn sells them in uh, weld through primer like this the silver and they sell it not assembled hence the reason it's called a kit and the nice thing about this kit is because it's not welded together I can pick and choose which pieces of it I need. Unfortunately, you can't just buy one piece of it. You have to buy the whole kit for each corner. The kit idea gives us the opportunity to say, well, all of this metal is still good. We just needed to replace this piece that had rusted, that had rusted through on the surface here. And because we're gonna be adding way more horsepower than this thing ever came out with stock, we want these torque boxes and the rest of the sheet metal for that matter to be in real good strong shape. So I've cleared all the rusted area out. I wire brushed everything in here. You saw me starting that with a flat disc. And so I got all that wire brushed and then I've used a cold, uh, cold galvanizing paint to cover all this. And I, I go back and forth between different two different paints, uh, rust reformer paint and this cold galvanizing. Now I like the cold galvanizing when what you're gonna paint is buried forever. You're, you're not gonna be able to put any more coatings or anything like that in here. Um, we can a little bit through some of the holes, you know, spray something else up in there and we probably will spray a, uh, a body protectant wax type product up in there. This cold galvanize basically creates a good solid surface that will last a long time and protect it from rusting into the future. So anyway, the box is painted that way up in here. I painted the inner, inner rockers and, and everything will probably get another coat or so. Um, this piece is now ready to go on. And I've spent about, I don't know, 20 minutes drilling all these holes out. Now I got one more I need to deburr. And then all of this can go in and this top part, we'll weld these from the outside and weld them into this panel so that's why I don't have any holes across here. The rest of it we can weld from the inside and weld to our existing stock metal. So that's the part I'm gonna head up next. I'm gonna deburr this one last hole and then get this thing set in place. Get a couple clamps on here and uh, this is gonna fit real nice. And the other thing I'm using is I've just got a, uh, it's actually a spot weld drill bit where it's basically just got a, a point and then a flat area. Um, and I just, I've got two, uh, one three eighths and one quarter inch. And so I've drilled quarter inch holes. Uh, I started drilling some three eighths. I decided that was probably bigger than I needed. So I went back to quarter inch, but, um, these others up here are three eighths. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you that is once I have this in place and, I've, and I'm ready to start welding, this galvanized paint is not necessarily weld through. I mean, you could, with a MIG, you're gonna burn through it. But what I can do is, once it's all lined up where I want it, I just put this drill bit in here, line it up with the hole, and uh, it will clean 
the uh, the primer off or the paint off. You can do it two ways. You can do it like this with this type of bit. You can just take an old broken bit and basically uh, cut it flat on a grinder and use that. All you need to do is just burn the paint off with the drill bit. So either, any system like this will work, but it's a great way to not have to go back now and clean off the flange so you can weld, only to then figure out, you know, or to leave areas that are not protected. So let me get some clamps and we'll get this on. Spent some time, I got all that, I got this panel welded back in for the torque box and then ground down the spot welds that I made, the rosettes, and then uh, went ahead and re-sprayed or sprayed it with paint and then I've done the same thing to the bottom side of the floor pan. And I have spent probably, uh, gosh, well over an hour just getting, air, getting this panel to fit as close as closely as I possibly could and I, I'm very happy with where it's at now we'll have to do a little hammer and dolly work up here and then and some trimming but it got to a point where I need to really just kind of start setting the panel in place and getting it nailed down or welded down before uh, before I tried making any more adjustments so it's just you buy these panels and you can see this is the just the passenger side and the driver's side was basically the same size and you can see how much of it you cut out of there it's, it's uh, you just cut so much of it away to uh, get it all to fit and that's fine because if you had rust up into the firewall further you could cut it deeper in if you had it over into the tunnel further you could cut it there you just you've got to you got to do what works for your project and get it as close as you can all right i just forgot to drill some holes to pull the wall outside in my plan is to get some of this upper seam up here welded in first and tie all that together then come down and clamp this other side and weld it in. Then I'll come over here and move things around as much as I need to to weld that in. So we're just going to take our time and get it all welded up, make it look good. We're just going to work our way real slow across here. All right, now we're going to get one of these big clamps and we're going to clamp down right here on this. Uh, frame rail rib and tie that in. Just keep checking, make sure that metal is flush. If you come on a spot that's not, move whichever side you need to. And sometimes you can use a clamp or a screwdriver in there and pry it one way or another. Just take your time, get it right. Just remember, lots of little tack welds. I'm going to leave that and I'll work this piece after I get everything else welded in. Okay, so we just got to bring these two pieces of metal together enough that we can go ahead and weld these together. Bring them together so we can weld them together. Okay. Kind of redundant. We've got a hammer and a doll here. We're just going to move the different metal. Okay. 
we end up with a couple places in here, like up here towards the top where it's a little too wide. Um, maybe right in here, it's a little too wide. But anyway, if we end up with a couple of those, we'll just take a little bit of uh, TIG rod, like uh, something that's clo close to the thickness of the sheet metal, so like a 16th inch or whatever. Just hold a little piece of TIG rod in there and weld over it. And then when we grind it, you'll never see it. most of them if we just keep working it with a hammer and dolly we're going to be there it is if i actually get it to weld because i keep welding one side or the other too far away <laughs> yeah it's coming together One of the things, if you're doing this, you may run into is we're working with what 50 year old, uh, 1970, so yeah, 51 year old sheet metal right here. And this sheet metal has been stretched to make all these shapes. So, whereas they might have started with, uh, I doubt it was 18 gauge, it was probably more likely 20 gauge that they started with. By the time it gets stretched and sh shaped to fit all this, it's very likely that it's, you know, 22, 24, even thinner than that gauge by, by the time you get to this point. Then we have new sheet metal, which is probably in the 20 gauge range. Um, I didn't measure it, but... Um, so your, your new sheet metal, as thin as it is, is going to be thicker than the old sheet metal. On top of the old sheet metal being having been stretched and everything to make the shape. The reason we media blasted everything was to get rid of surface rust and other stuff. And, and you can see, still see places where it didn't all come out. So this metal has been thinned by age and you know deterioration. So you're gonna blow through. Just when you do, quit where you're at, move on, and come back to it after it's had time to cool. And, and then you can work off of your old, or your new weld into the hole that you've created. Like over here, I've burned through because I was using the welder pretty hot. So I'll clean this up a little bit and then I'll weld that up uh, with the welder set fairly low. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep going like this, get this all welded up over to here, onto this side. And then the last thing is where this flange comes down. I'll go ahead and weld it through these rosettes to the frame rail. Can you even see that? So I'll go ahead and weld these two through the frame rail, but this flange on the, where it comes into the rocker panel on the side there, I'm not gonna weld those in because I can tie that into the floor then. Um, and actually I may go ahead and hold off here just in case my floor comes up a little further than those two rosettes. So I'll, I'll hold off on these as well. But we'll go ahead and get this welded in, finish up the tunnel, and then uh, grind this down before we move on to another project another part of the project well there we have it um, all that's welded in I'm gonna touch up this area just a little bit more but other than that it's uh, ready to get some primer thrown on it for those of you interested we are nine seven seven hours so minus hour six hours so for those of you interested, um, I'm about six hours into everything that I've done today. So yesterday I got that plate, uh, the uh, torque box plate, all ready to weld in, everything painted, and, and then I just let the paint dry overnight. And so I started with welding that in this morning and then fitting this sheet metal piece into the puzzle here and then welding it in grinding the welds um, I welded both sides of the seam and that was so I could have enough material to grind them to get them smooth the inside I'm not too worried about it being smooth or metal finished if you will but the outside I want it pretty smooth because we're gonna you know some of that you're gonna see in the engine bay so we want that seam to be as smooth as possible I still have to grind from about here, middle of the steering column, over to somewhere in here. And the reason I haven't done that yet is because the apron for the for the uh, front end 
going out to the strut tower is right in that area so I just none of my tools are quite small enough unless I use like a finger uh, sander one of the little belt sanders and that would work it would just take a very long time and there's no reason to worry about it because that apron is going to be coming out so that we can do some other work inside the uh, engine compartment so I'll just wait and grind that when we get to that point so other than that this panel is done and ready um, it'll need obviously to be seam sealed and all that when we get ready to put the car together but uh, it came out real good I'm happy with it next up is we need to do the same thing to the other side although I don't think it's going to be as extensive we don't have as much rust over there um, I am afraid we're going to have to do part of the torque box but we may get away with just doing a chunk of the floor rather than having to come all the way over into the tunnel and all of that and just basically saving more of the original sheet metal and then just do the portion of the torque box um, as much or as we need to do. Before I get the floor in we have some pedals I want to put in here and since I have it's easy to stand here and work on it I think I'm going to do that before I put the floor in at least get the mount built uh, even if it's adjustable if you will. That's it for now so thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications, all that YouTube stuff. I really do appreciate it when you comment, whether you like it, dislike it, want to see more, want to know more, want to know what parts I'm using or tools. I try to list any of the tools I'm using in the video description just so you guys can find them, use them yourselves. And then check out the Tool Bags Tuesdays. I, I hit most of these same products over there, especially ones that I really like. So we'll see you again soon. Take care. Thanks.